Heather, I'm Sid, and we're standing right in the back of the church where you can find the merchandise, which includes t-shirts, sweatshirts, tumblers, books, even hats, and car air fresheners, and each of them have a word of truth so you can walk around and share the gospel, whether it's in the church, at your house, at the grocery store, at work, so make sure after service you come back here, see us, and get some church food. Hey, it's Jordan from Empowered Youth, and I want to invite all you teens from ages 13 to 19 every second Friday of the month at 7 p.m. So parents, bring your kids out, and you'll have a wonderful time, and hope to see all you guys there. Hi, Empowered Kids and Empowered Parents. Listen, we meet here every Sunday at 11 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We have lessons for your kids that's on their level. It's practical. We teach them about the love of God. We have snacks. We have games. We have crafts. We have everything that they can desire. So listen, I want to see you here this Sunday, 11 a.m. See you there. I'm so excited to invite you to Crossfire every first Friday of every month at 7 p.m. And you from ages from 16 to 40, and you enjoy the powerful preaching and powerful word. We want to see you here. Meet us here in the sanctuary. The only thing missing is you. Can't wait to see you. Hey, 2040, we are back at Jesus is Lord Church, and we can't wait to see you. If you're from the ages of 20 to 40, you are invited. And also, bring a friend. If you're from the ages of 2040, we would love to see you the third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. There's food, there's fun, and there's always some fellowship. So we would love to see you. We are committed to creating a culture that connects and cares. Can't wait to see you. Welcome to Jesus Lord Church. I believe today is your day for a miracle. Right now, take a moment, share this live video so we can reach others that need to experience God's saving and healing power. I'm excited today. I can't wait to share this word with you. Let's go into a service as we worship God together. That you've even gone to win my war. Your love's become my greatest defense. It leads me from the dry well. All I did was praise. All I did was worship. All I did was bow.
together with us. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Yes, Lord. I was breathing, but not. Call my name. Hey. I ran 
and kept your life for such a time as this. Can I see your hand if you're glad you're alive? Somebody said, well, what do you mean am I glad? I know people that didn't make it this year. People did not make it another year to 2022. But God has spared you for the purpose of us giving him the praise and the glory. He, be- he deserves the highest praise. Somebody give God a praise right now. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. The devil hates it when we begin to praise God. You know that when we begin to begin to praise God, that demons begin to tremble. When we begin to praise God, we shift the very atmosphere. When we praise God here, not only are people being touched here, but people are going to be touched wherever they're watching out there tonight. Let's give God praise tonight for his word. Hallelujah. Well, we've worshiped. Now it's time to declare the word of God. 
Stand with me. Go with me in your Bible tonight. We welcome you, those that are watching online. I'm going to ask every one of you, maybe you read your, your word on your phone or your tablet. Why don't you take a moment and share this live broadcast if you love to see people blessed. Amen. How many of you love to see people blessed? When you share the word of God, it will bless somebody. Can you say praise the Lord? Turn with me in your Bible. I'm reading tonight from the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. This is the word of God. Amen. The factory of faith. This is where faith is produced. Amen. I believe tonight people are going to be saved, healed, and delivered by the power of Almighty God. Everybody shout, tonight's the night. Shout it like you actually believe that. Tonight is my night. How many of you have got faith and you believe that this is the year God is going to set your family free? How many of you believe this is the year God's going to save your loved ones? God's going to restore your loved ones' lives. Can you say amen? How many of you believe this is the year of total healing and deliverance? How many of you believe this is your year to prosper? Raise your hands and declare it now. I will prosper this year. Shout it out. I'll prosper this year. Say, I'm going to prosper in my home. I'm going to prosper in my mind. I'm going to prosper in my relationships. Say it. I'm going to prosper. Tell somebody you're about to prosper in every area of your life. You shall not lack for anything. Amen. I want to tell every one of you that I believe in God for healing. Healing is flowing into your body tonight. Everybody lift your hands and shout, miracles are in the house. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you know you're one word away from a miracle? Shout on one word away from a miracle. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11, the, the chapter of faith. It says this in Hebrews 11 in one of the Amplified Classic. I don't know about you, I get stirred up when the Word of God is preached. You know what I learned? You start bragging on God, He'll show up. Can you say amen? I said you start bragging on God, He's going to show up tonight. Hallelujah. Ever, how many of you want God to show up in your house? Show up in your family. Amen. Now faith, the Bible says, is the assurance. Everybody say now faith. Everybody shout not tomorrow. Everybody shout right now. Everybody shout not past faith, but not, but not future faith, but everybody shout now faith. Tell somebody, I got now faith. Faith, now faith is the assurance. Everybody say, I have the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of the things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Are you still with me? Faith perceiving as real fact. Say that part together. Say faith, perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So the Bible says now faith is, or turn it around and say faith is now. Shout faith is now. Or now faith is, or faith is now. How many of you believe tonight that something can happen in your life, amen, that has never happened before? Can I see your hand? Everybody shout, I got right now faith. And the Bible says, drop down with me to verse, verse number 6 of Hebrews 11. But without faith, it is what? Impossible. But without faith, it is what? It is difficult? No. Without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God, whoever, everybody shout whoever. Doesn't matter if you're white, black, Hispanic, Oriental. Doesn't matter if you're Asian. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists. How many of you believe God is, exists? And that he is the rewarder. Everybody shout, my God is a rewarder. He rewards you with blessing. He rewards you with a long life. He rewards you with health and healing. He rewards you, amen, with peace of mind and joy unspeakable and full of glory. Everybody shout, I serve a rewarder. He is the rewarder of those who what? Earnestly and diligently seek him out. Come on, somebody shout praise the Lord. Clap your hands if you receive the word of God tonight. I said, clap your hands if you receive the word of God. You may be seated. Let me tell you this tonight. When you are a Christian, you don't need luck. When you're a child of God, you are blessed on every side. Christians are not lucky. Christians are blessed. I don't need a demon-possessed leprechaun to bless me. I've got Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, that blesses me every day of my life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And when you're a child of God, you don't live your life based 
based on luck. People say, well, the, 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 the luck of the Irish. There is no luck for a child of God. Luck is a, based on a chance. But a person of faith has a confident expectation of what God has spoken will be fulfilled in my life. Everybody shout, I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. I'm blessed every day of my life. I'm blessed to be alive tonight and begin to lift my hands to a holy God that loves me so much that died on the cross for the shedding and shed his blood for the forgiveness of my sins. Tell somebody, you are blessed. Luck doesn't direct my life and fear doesn't control my life, but God, hallelujah, controls my life. We need to understand that when you seek God, you will find the true purpose in your life. Everybody shout, I've got faith over fear. When you are blessed of the Lord, you need to understand I'm talking about faith tonight. Everybody shout faith. How many of you got faith? When you've got faith, it cancels out fear. It's not about a fluke among somebody and it's not about luck, but when you got faith in God, you are assured victory in every situation that comes into your life. Everybody shout, my faith is in God. And when you got faith in God, faith and words of faith and words that have creative uh, capability in life, you need to understand it will come out of your mouth. I've never met a person that claims to be full of faith and they're talking about fear and doubt and unbelief. I never heard a person of faith walk around and say, well, I'm a lucky person. I don't need a rabbit's tail. I don't need, oh my God, I don't, I don't need a four-leaf clover. I got the blessing of God upon my life. Raise your hands and shout, I am blessed. Tell some Somebody, luck doesn't direct me and fear doesn't control me, but I live a life of faith. And that's why every day you should be developing in your faith. Your faith should not be getting weaker. Your faith should be getting stronger. I love the father of faith, which is the father Abraham in Romans chapter number 4. Romans chapter number 4, verses 20 and 21. The Bible says in Romans 4, verse 20 and 21. In spite of great impossibility, the Bible says that Abraham, the Bible says, did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. Everybody shout, he did not waver. Or the King James says he did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. In spite of his old age, in spite of his dead, his wife's dead womb, but he was strengthened in his faith when he was facing impossibility. And the Bible says his faith. Faith was empowered in the midst of impossibility. And the Bible says he, may, he, began, he became stronger. And the Bible says he was strengthened in his faith as he, gave, he believed that what God spoke, that God had the power to fulfill what he promised. Everybody shout, I believe. And I am persuaded that God has the power to fulfill that which he promised. And that's what I love about Abraham, the father of faith, when he was faced with great impossibility possibility. He was not weakened in his faith. He was strengthened in his faith. Are you listening to me? Shout amen. And the Bible says he was strengthened and he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he would bring it to pass. Do you have that kind of faith tonight? If you do, clap your hands and shout, I believe and I am persuaded that God will fulfill what he promised. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. I said raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. You need to understand understand when you come to church, you should always come with the praise in your mouth. You should always come with your hands raised and bless the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 15, by him therefore let us offer unto God a sacrifice of praise continually. Not when I feel like it, not when the when my God, not when I feel like praising God, not when it's sunny out, not when it's raining, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise Tell somebody, I'm blessed, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed all the days of my life. I'm blessed just to be breathing right now. I came tonight to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, somebody, lift your hands. You become so churchy, you've lost your praise to God. Open up your mouth, you got something to shout about. You got something to sing about. You got something to run about. You got something to dance about. You're saved, you're free, shout amen. We need to understand that every good thing that you and I have is all because of Jesus. 
Everything you have is because of Jesus. There's a lot of people I've been around them a long time, and they become be, begin to take credit for the things that they have in their life. Nothing I have that that does not did not come from God. Every good thing in my life has come from God. Can you say Amen? Is healing a good thing? Is is peace in your mind a good thing? Is a roof over your head a good thing? Food to eat on your table. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a good thing, can you say amen, to be alive tonight. My God, on a Thursday night where most churches are shut down midweek in New York State, we've come here tonight to honor, glorify, and develop in our faith. Raise your hands and shall, Lord, increase my faith. But the Bible says that Abraham, in the midst of difficulty and impossibility, he grew strong and was empowered by faith. I heard a lot of people say, well, Pastor, I've got faith. Well, faith is only faith when it's the only thing that you're holding on to. Faith is the only one spiritual element that will always produce a tangible substance in my life. It is faith that attracts the power. It is faith that attracts the blessing. It is faith that attracts the breakthrough. It is faith that attracts the restoration. Everybody shout, I got faith for it. How many of you got faith that this is the year that God is going to blow your mind with blessing? Do you got faith for it? Everybody shout, I've got faith. Tell somebody, keep the faith, baby. You need to understand this is not a faith that you keep, but this is a faith that will keep you. It'll keep you in the times and the hour and the days that we're living in that is approaching and the dark days that are coming upon us. But when you've got faith in God, you are not controlled by doubt or unbelief. You're not full of fear. When you hear the word of God and receive it into your spirit, something begins to happen in your spirit and it begins to flow out of your mouth. Instead of walking around depressed and disturbed, Courage, you walk around with your head held high and say, I believe that God created me for more than this. And I'm not going to settle to live sick. I'm not going to settle for barrenness or brokenness. But I believe that Jesus came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Somebody shout hallelujah. The devil has robbed from you long enough. And I declare to the devil tonight and those of you that are watching online that need a miracle or in this room, let him who steals, steal no more. This is your night. Raise your hands and shout hallelujah. Glorify the Lord with your hands raised and your mouth with praise. That's why you got to seek him. When you seek God, you will find the true purpose and God's plan for your life. The reason why some people are miserable and claim to be Christians is because they're living their will, not God's will. When you're living in the will of God and you understand that God has created you with a powerful potential. My God, the vision that God has given you, it wakes you up every day and you understand that you've been created and called to fulfill a specific assignment and purpose. People that understand purpose are not depressed. People that understand their purpose in the kingdom of God, they're not walking around discouraged. Come on, somebody. They're not living a life that is disheartened. Well, pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, let me give you the words of Jesus. Jesus said, he said, in this world, there's going to be trouble, John 16, 33. There's going to be despair. There's going to be a life. There's going to be calamity all around us. Days are going to grow darker. But he said to his disciples, cheer up. Be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world for you. Everybody shout, tell somebody, cheer up. Some of you haven't smiled in months. And that's why the devil's on your back because he sees what's on your face. Put a smile on your face and shout, I got something to be happy about. I got joy unspeakable. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I am not going to live discouraged. I am not going to live defeated. But I'm going to live a life full of the joy of the Lord. My God, I'm saved, Pastor. You're miserably saved. That is not the testimony of a Christian. A testimony of a Christian is I'm the blessed person, most blessed on the planet. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why we gotta we gotta receive the word of God. We we've got to develop in our faith. That's why the Bible says Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We've got to hear the word of God more, not less. Can you say amen? Let me tell you something. There are three things that will continually come, Kenny, under an attack. Our faith, our family, 
and our finances. These are the three areas that the enemy will continually attack you in. Because if he can attack you in your family and you give in and you're discouraged, he can take you out. If he, my God, he could attack you, my God, in your finances. And then what happens is when you go through a season of, of barrenness or a season of attack or a season of, of setback, the enemy can discourage you and then stop you from honoring God. If you give in to the emotions and fear, and therefore every time you stop and you withhold from God, the enemy has sabotaged your harvest because you cannot receive a new harvest until you first plant a new seed. Everybody shout, my faith, my my family and my finances. Anybody ever go through an attack in your family? I got my hands up. Oh my God, anybody ever go through an attack in your faith? Anybody ever go through an attack in the financial realm of your life? But you need to understand it's because of your faith in God that you're here tonight. It's because of your love for the Lord that you're here tonight in the house of God. Come on, somebody. And thank God some of us, we, we don't look like what we've been through. We don't look like the storms we've survived. But thank God we're in our right mind. And I've been created by God to praise. While some of you think shouting is a waste of time, the Bible says the only ones that don't are the dead. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says that we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Romans chapter 10 tells us that faith, it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Say that together, faith comes. Everybody say faith comes. When faith comes, fear goes. When faith comes, doubt leaves. When faith shows up, sickness has got to exit your life. That's why we need the Word of God. And some of you, the worst thing you can do is miss midweek service because the Word of God is pumped into you on midweek. You can't survive eating spiritually one day a week on a Sunday. Come on, somebody. But that's why we come to church on a midweek and we press into the power of God in spite of the hell we might have walked through today because we know our next miracle and our next season is contingent upon receiving the word of faith that is being preached but your faith has to be fed in order for your faith to grow everybody how many of you want your faith to grow somebody shout hallelujah it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God somebody said to me years ago well pastor I heard that before well thank God the Bible doesn't say faith comes by having heard it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Or how many of you love God's word? Shout amen. So that's why when you've got faith, you're not talking about your trouble. When you've got faith and you're so full of faith, you can't help it. Oh my God, did I say that? It just pops right out of your mouth because the word of God is in your heart. And when you hide the word of God in your heart in a day of difficulty and dilemma and distress, the word of God will come out of your mouth. My God, you can get a bad report from the doctor, but you got the good report and says, by his stripes, I am healed. Somebody shout hallelujah. So faith comes how? By hearing. Amen. Somebody said, well, pastor, you know, I like to sit home and receive it. Sitting home in your pajamas is not going to church. Get your lazy self up, get, you, get dressed, get out in the car, and get, you, get to the house of God again. Can you say amen? Faith, my God, this is the word of God. And the word of God is the factory of faith. My God, we need more faith. We need more preachers of faith. I don't know what this new generation or new breed, let me call them, of so-called preachers. They're not preaching from the Bible. They're giving you a little, little sermon at it. They're giving you a little mentorship message. But that does not have the power to save your soul. But one word from Almighty God has the power to revolutionize your life. And when you experience and encounter the power, you're not the person you used to be. Stand to your feet and give God praise. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us very clearly that there are levels of faith. There are levels of faith that we grow in. Let me tell you something. I said this the other night to my mother as we were fellowshipping, sharing the word of God. This is not the hour to live outside of the will of God. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. This is not the hour to do what you want to do. And do what you will, Pastor. I'm called to the ministry. If God sent you to this church, your ministry is to support my ministry that God has called me to. 
if you think that this is a life of glamour, you don't even have half a clue. My God, you are totally, totally in outer space. If you think this is about being seen by people, you don't understand the demonic attack that comes against men and women of God that have raised the standard and will declare the word of God to a lost and dying generation. But I've come to tell you, as long as I got breath, I'm going to preach it. As long as God gives me the strength, I'm going to stand and proclaim that there's a God that saves, a Christ that heals. There's a heaven again and a hell to shun. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are levels of faith. Everybody shout levels of faith. Paul talked about there are levels of faith that we grow in. There are levels of faith that we grow and we walk in. Paul talked about it in Romans chapter number 1, verse 17. Are you still with me? Are you focused? Faith is always focused. If you've got faith, you're focused. You're hanging on every word that's being preached. You're not distracted. You're not having nonsensical conversation with your neighbor. But you're sitting attentive and ready to receive the word of God. Can you say amen? Don't tell me you love God and you don't love the word of God. Don't tell me you love this church and you don't love the word of God. If you love the word of God, clap your hands and say amen. The Bible says that the word of God, not singing, thank God for singing. How many of you appreciate the praise team? Amen. Three people, wonderful. You want to be encouraged, learn to be an encourager. Learn to edify and build others up. Amen. Can you say amen? We need to understand something. The Bible says that the word of God has the power to save our soul. The word of God is the most important thing in this church. There's nothing more important than the word of God. Amen. There's nothing more important than hearing the word of God preached under the unction and anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says there are levels of faith. Everybody say levels. I know people, that they've been in church 40 years, they're still on the same level. They're still on, on, on milk when they should, have, they should have already graduated now have developed on, into meat. Amen. And begin to receive the meat of the word of God. But Paul said how the righteousness, Romans 1, of God. Everybody shout, he's preaching tonight. How the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The Lord told me many people tonight, their miracle depends on this word. Their miracle depends on the faith that they're receiving tonight. Somebody's discouraged, but faith is about to be activated in your life. And miracles are about to be released into your body. The Bible says how righteous the righteousness of God is revealed. Everybody shout, from faith to faith. As it is written, it says this, for the just shall live by faith. Say that with me. We live by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by his faith. Can you say amen? There are multiple levels of faith, and faith grows as you grow in God. Everybody shout, my faith grows as I grow in God. But listen to what Paul said to the church of Thessalonica. In 2 Thessalonians 1 and 3, Paul said to the people of that church, your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. I love this testimony of this church. It says, Paul said to this church, your faith has been growing exceedingly. Can you say amen? And the love of everyone, everybody shout the love of everyone. Every one of you all abounds toward Towards each other. So we understand that faith is one of, the Bible says, the fruits of the Spirit. But fruit doesn't begin at full maturity. It starts out as a seed. Everybody say, my faith starts as a seed. And then it grows to produce and bloom that fades to reveal, the Bible says, the immature fruit. And then the fruit is nurtured until it reaches maturity. Understand this tonight. Your faith in God has to be continually fed in order for it to grow. My God, I know people here tonight, there are many years you've heard the word of God preach from many of God's choicest servants from this pulpit. You should know the word of God more than anybody else in this room. You've been sitting here for over 40 years. And the word of God you should be so ingrained in your spirit that it should flow and roll off the tip of your tongue. Can you say amen? The Bible says you're to be instant in season and out of season, always ready to give an answer for your faith. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Somebody 
somebody said, everybody shout, my faith in order for it to grow has to be fed. And I want to encourage you for some of you that are walking through a difficult season right now. You may have hit some barriers in your faith walk, but do not let that discourage you because all barriers can be broken and you can go as high as you believe that God can take you. But you've got to keep feeding your faith. Tell somebody, keep feeding your faith. Keep feeding your faith. Do you have a God-given dream? Say amen. Do you have a vision for your future? Come on, say amen, somebody. You need to understand that when you've got a vision, the enemy is going to tempt you to have fear and to be intimidated in your pursuit of your dream. And that's why you've got to have the faith of God and the Word of God because the Word of God is the greatest weapon against every demonic onslaught of evil in your life. My God, when Jesus was tempted in every area yet without sin, he answered the enemy every time with the Word of God. The Word of God produces victory. The Word of God breeds healing. The Word of God activates the supernatural. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Clap your hands and shout, I want more of the Word. Declare this with me. I'm ready to walk in faith. I'm going to break barriers and move into a new dimension this year in God. Shout, I will break out of my comfort zone. And I trust God that he will take me to another level of faith. Say amen if you want to go to another level of faith. So what does it say in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7? 2 Corinthians 5, 7 it says, For we walk by what? Faith, not by sight. Everybody shout, I live by faith. Everybody say, I walk by faith. And he said something interesting. We walk by faith, but not by sight. We walk by faith. Can you say amen? We walk by faith, what we hear, not by sight, what we're watching. That is the life of faith. Amen. We walk by faith, by what we hear, not by sight, by the things that we're watching. That is the life of faith. The life of faith, understanding that God is in control of your life. I have a confident expectation of fulfillment tonight. That God will perform every promise that he has made over my life. How many of you have that type of trust and confidence tonight that God will fulfill what he has promised you in your life? Everybody shout, I have a confident expectation of fulfillment that God will do what he promised me. Can you say amen, somebody? We need to understand tonight that he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. And he gave us a promise that he will take care of you and me. God promised to take care of me. That's why I really don't care what happens in this world. In other words, concerning what happens in politics and in government, I really don't because I know that God is responsible for his people. Can you say amen? And I believe this with all of my heart that he is the king of all kings and he is the lord of all lords and he is the master amen that can deal with any disaster that would arise in my life can you say amen look at the laws and what's going on right now and what's trying to be passed even within the supreme court and all these things everything that is going on right now against the church anti-religion laws and anti-god in our government and anti-bible but I made a my mind. I said, Lord, I am not going to allow this stuff to control my soul. Can you say amen? The only thing that's going to control my soul and uh, that's going to empower my spirit is what you've said concerning my life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? We need to understand there are things that are going on around us and Jesus told us in advance that these things would come to be. That's why we've got to be so full of faith and encouraged and empowered together in the house of God. And that's what was the main ploy and assignment of the enemy through COVID-19 was to disconnect the body so that we could not agree together. Because the enemy hates it when people of faith come together. We join in like spirit. We love one another. Come on, somebody. We feed on each other's faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. So what did he do? He tried to use COVID-19. I know many people don't want to hear it, but I don't care what you want to hear. I'm going to preach as the pastor of this house, the angel of this church that he has come to divide. He used racism to try to disconnect and divide the church. That didn't work. He tried to use COVID. That didn't work. Somebody shout hallelujah. He tried to use doctrine. That
that didn't work. He tried to use disease, that didn't work. It won't work, why? Because no weapon that is formed against the church Somebody shout, Lord, help my faith. The joy of the Lord is our strength tonight. And I know one thing. What are you hearing? What are you listening to? What report are you believing? Somebody said, well, I'm in the word all day, Pastor. Well, if it's not coming out of your mouth, you're a religious fanatic. You are not a person that you are not a person that is empowered by the Holy Ghost. You can read the word of God all day. If it's not coming out of your mouth, your faith is in vain. The Bible says you believe in your heart and then you declare or confess with your mouth. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah in the house of God. Everybody say faith speaks. Say it together. Faith speaks. Fear shouldn't be speaking. Amen. But what you listen to will affect you. What you listen to, who you associate with, those that you allow to speak into your life, it will affect your development as a believer. That's why I don't just hang around with a lot of people I don't. I don't just allow anybody in my inner circle. Jesus didn't either. Can you say amen? A couple of years ago, a lady wrote our office, and she said, I was highly offended. I said, oh, great, I did my job. Hallelujah. She said, I was highly offended because you said in the service that not everybody is going where God is taking you. Well, it's biblical. When Jesus went up on the mountain, he didn't take just everybody with him. He took Peter, James, and John. The higher you go in the kingdom, and in the dimension of the spirit, the smaller your circle becomes. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And the reason why some of you are stuck in the rut of the same level and the same dimension is because you allow the wrong people into your inner circle and you allow the words that they speak to take root in your heart. But I refuse to allow anybody contaminate my life, contaminate my future, contaminate my children's future. I'm going to declare the word of God and I'm going to stay connected with people that are strong in faith. What are you hearing? I'm hearing Jesus is coming soon. What are you hearing in the spirit? Ahab said, while everyone was focused on the famine, he said, I picked up something in the spirit. I hear a sound of abundance of rain. What are you hearing tonight? What are you hearing? What are you hearing in your spirit? What are you hearing? I'm hearing, my God, that Christ is getting ready to return for his church. I'm hearing the trumpet is getting ready to sound. I'm hearing he's bringing another kingdom where righteousness is going to be exalted. My God, I'm hearing, my God, my hope is not of this world, but my hope is of eternal life in Christ. Shout amen, somebody. My God, don't live by what you see in the natural, but live based on what you believe in the supernatural. You got to live your life based on what you hear in the spirit. Don't allow what you hear in the natural to affect what God spoke to your spirit. I hear people all the time, well, the Lord told me to do this. You hear God more than Moses, Paul, Peter, and all the other apostles. You hear God more than any other man of God, and I've been connected with the greatest in the kingdom. God don't speak to you like that. He speaks to you at pivotal points in your life. He speaks to you when he's getting ready to shift you into a greater dimension. He will call you into an arena of greater sacrifice. Can you say amen? Well, the Lord spoke to me to buy diet today. The Lord spoke to me to have a root beer. The Lord spoke to me to go to Burger King. The Lord spoke to me to go to Five Guys. The Lord don't speak to you to go to Applebee's. Now, if he's sending you there on assignment, he might do that. If it's concerning eternity and somebody that may be in spiritual jeopardy, shout amen. The Lord has told me to do certain things. But some of you, you always use the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. Let me tell you what the Lord said. Love one another. Start speaking to people with kind words. Stop being vindictive and hurtful and pray in tongues for four hours. Somebody shout hallelujah. Love your brother. Have concern for those that are suffering and hurting. And stop telling me what God is saying to you. We have so many granola Christians, a lot of Nature Valley Christians, a lot of granola Christians. You know what a granola Christian is? They're nutty and they're flaky. And Long Island is filled with granola Christians. They're nutty and they're flaky. 
They're weird. I don't like hanging around weird people. The Holy Ghost is not weird. The Holy Ghost is powerful. The Holy Ghost is, come on somebody. The Holy Ghost is not unstable. The Holy Ghost is stable. Somebody the other day texted me and they said, Pastor, I want to come back and help at the church. I said, I thought you told me God told you to go to another church. I never heard from that person again. Raise your hands and shout, he's been delivered. Oh, hallelujah. I've been delivered from nutty and crazy so-called Christians. God is raising up a mighty army of believers in this last day that are going to invade enemy held territory and take souls for God's glory. This ain't a time to play religious charades and duck, duck, deuce in the house of God. It's time to heal the sick and cast out devils. Leadership, start correcting people in love. God told me to do this. God told me. Preacher came years ago to Brother Shambach. Said, Brother Shambach, the Lord told me to leave my wife. He said, let me guess, she's 20 years younger than the new one. He said, how did you know? Why does God always tell these preachers to leave their wives for girls that are 20, 30 years younger? That ain't God. You made a vow before heaven. You made a covenant with God, amen, and with each other. Can you say amen? This one preacher walked up to Brother Shamrock and said, have you met my wife? He said, not this one. Told the preacher right to his face, I loved it. I love it when people are direct, not to hurt people, but to be truthful. There's so many preachers, they stand up and they lie to people every week. I ain't doing it. I'm not lying to nobody. The Bible says the only thing that will liberate you is truth. You shall know the truth. Raise your hands and shout the truth will make me free. How many of you want to be free? Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you need to go home and cast the devil out of your wife tonight. Some of you need to go home tonight and lay hands on your children and cast the devil. And don't play with this anointing tonight. I'm dead serious about what I'm preaching. The Bible says that this is the hour for the true church to stand up and proclaim the gospel to this generation and I made up my mind that this generation is going to experience the power that I experienced. Why didn't God tell you to leave your wife for a 90 year old woman? Well that's not God, that's the devil. Don't allow what you hear affect what God said to your spirit. We walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is trusting God. Say that together. Faith is trusting God. Jesus said in John chapter number 15, he says, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Hollywood is not my standard. The perverted, sin-filled Kardashians are not my standard. God is my standard. No matter how much money they have, they're still insane. Oh, I love him. They're, it's over in a week. It ain't love, it's lust. Ladies, let me help you. If you're going out with somebody or planning to marry somebody and they don't love God more than you, drop the bum. Of course, it will end in disaster. But when two walk together, amen, in agreement, and there's a, there is, a, my God, there is a faith, amen. There is a kindred spirit. They are unstoppable as a couple upon the earth. Can you say amen? What do you hear today? What are you hearing? I hear Deuteronomy 28. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. Somebody shout Hallelujah. I said, I'm blessed whatever, wherever I go, I am blessed. This is what faith people do. This is what people that are blessed do. They speak words of life. 
They speak words that have creative power. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Faith people can look at defeat and they hear victory. They look at discouragement and they start saying, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. Come on, somebody. Well, pastor, I don't feel blessed. Let me tell you something. Everything changes when you hear and receive the word of God. I said everything changes when you hear and receive the word of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Pastor, you know, I don't know how it's going to happen. It may not happen tonight. It may not happen tomorrow. But even if it doesn't happen tomorrow, my faith won't let go like Jacob until he blesses me. That's faith. You watch one thing, but you hear another thing. My faith says I'm healed. What are you hearing tonight? I hear I'm healed. According to Isaiah 53, come on somebody shout hallelujah. I hear I'm free. My God, that's what I hear tonight. John 8, 32, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I hear that I am blessed. According to Deuteronomy 28, what are you hearing? What are you listening to? What are you meditating on? I hear Romans 8, 28, that all things are working together and fitting into a plan that has been divinely designed by God for those that love God and those who are the called according to his purpose. What are you hearing tonight? I hear that you are more than a conqueror through him who loved you and gave himself for you. What are you hearing tonight? What are you listening to? I'm anointed. That's what I hear. I'm blessed. He did not choose me. I did not choose him, but rather he chose me. God wasn't lost. I was lost, and he found me. What are you hearing tonight? I'm blessed when I come in, and I'm blessed when I go out. Let me tell you what I hear for about 12 people tonight that will reach out by faith and receive it. I declare Ezekiel 12, 28, that none of my words will be deferred or delayed any longer. God is about to hasten his word to perform his promise and his oath, his covenant that he made over your life. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. No, you're seeing one thing, but you're hearing something different. Pastor, I just buried a loved one. You may have seen him go into the grave, but you're hearing another sound. Ain't no grave gonna hold this body. I said there ain't no grave that's gonna hold this body down. It may look like death, but there's resurrection power in the name of Jesus. And that same spirit that raised to life again, the three-day dead body of the Prince of our God, it lives on the inside of me. And that spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if it lives in you, you can't stay down for long. Shout, ain't no grave gonna hold this body down when I hear that trumpet sound I'm gonna get up I'm gonna get up I'm gonna get up out of the ground when the Lord himself descends from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God the dead in Christ shall rise first and those of us that are alive and remain we shall be caught up in the air to forever be with the Lord so encourage one another Resurrection power. There's resurrection power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's still breakthrough in the name of Jesus. There's still salvation, signs and wonders and miracles you better believe or you're going to die with that disease. Tell three people it's not over for you. What I'm hearing is greater than what I'm seeing. 
Elisha said to his servant, go out and tell me what you see. He said, I don't see anything yet. He said, Lord, open my servant's eyes that he might see. And you know the story. God opened his eyes and the servant of the prophet, he saw. Come on, somebody. What are you hearing tonight? What are you listening to? What are you meditating on? What I'm hearing, my God, my God is not greater than what I'm experiencing. I don't care what they say on CNN. I don't care what they say on Fox News. I don't care what they say on all the fake news media. I'm not going to let what they say cancel what God spoke to my spirit in the last days. I will pour out my spirit. Tell me what you hear. Talk to me somebody. Please preach to me. What do you hear? There's a mighty revival getting ready to sweep across the nation. And there's going to be millions upon millions of people that are swept into the kingdom of God. If you're a preacher of the gospel, God did not call you to preach your feelings or your opinions. Stand up and preach the word of God. Shall we walk by faith? That's why I'm putting up the tent for the whole summer. That's why I'm bringing Pastor Rodney Howard Brown here on next month on the 24th, Sunday night. We're going to see Long Island shaking. You don't believe it. Got to raise somebody else and send them to this church that does believe it. I said, God's about to shake Long Island. I said, Lord, one more time. I cried out like Samson, one more time, let us see a revival. One more time, let us see a mighty move of a God, an awakening of your spirit. One more time. Shout one more time. What do you hear? Calvary. Look like defeat but on the third day it was dark when he died they began to think about going back to their occupation begin to go fishing again it was a dark day on Calvary it seems like that Christ was defeated on Calvary but aren't you glad on the third day Jesus arose. I said, aren't you glad? Is anybody glad that he's not dead? I said, on the third day, he arose, triumphant over his foes. My Savior, my Savior, my Savior, he arose, triumphant and victorious over all the power of hell. And he's still alive. He's still moving. He's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still restoring. What do you hear? Today, everybody's a prophet. The sign of a real prophet is what they say actually happens. Everybody was prophesying Trump wasn't going to lose the election. Well, Pastor, you know, he didn't. They stole it from him. He's still lost. He's not in the White House right now. So it's time you man up, pull up your big boy pants, and admit that you missed it. A prophet, when he prophesies, it comes to pass. And I told some of my friends, I said, when are you going to go public and tell everybody how you miss God? They don't talk to me anymore. People don't want truth. They want to preach truth, but they don't want to hear truth. You want to do something significant in the kingdom of God, you need somebody that's going to set you straight. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Somebody shout, I want truth. So many times these prophets are even talking doom and gloom. 
what is coming upon the earth. We're not careful in the last days. We will paint a picture of gloom and destruction that will affect our children. And yes, it is perilous times. And yes, evil men and seducers are going to arise. I don't know about you. I've never seen such corruption as we're seeing right now in America. I've never seen anything like what we're dealing with. Has any of you? Say amen. I've never seen anything like it. And I'm not worried about it because at the same time, that's going on. I hear something different. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, saith God, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How long are you going to live by what you see rather than what you hear? This is what I see, Pastor. You're talking yourself out of a miracle. Are you going to live by what you see? I'm almost done. Or are you going to live by what you hear in the Spirit? Answer me. Answer me. And your sons and your daughters, I hear this, shall prophesy. Everybody shout, my son is going to prophesy. My daughter is going to prophesy. My loved ones that are away from God, wayward children, prodigal sons, they shall prophesy. Can somebody shout hallelujah? What is a prophecy? A prophecy talks about the future. In other words, your young people will get filled with the Holy Ghost in the last day, and they will talk for the future, and they will foretell the things to come. Somebody shout hallelujah. Pastor, the world is coming to an end. But God says, before it does, I'm going to raise up a generation that's going to see their dream come to pass. We are going to change politics. We are going to change medicine. The church is going to change the world, the lost, the broken, the nation. Government is not the answer. Republican or Democrat is not the answer. New laws are not the answer. The church is the answer. Everybody shout faith. Everybody shout faith. Everybody say not fear. Not luck, not fluke, faith, faith. We're going to change the world. Only if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you have a vision from God of what your purpose is, and you speak faith. It got real dark. When Jesus died. You know the story. But it didn't stay that way. He arose on the third day. Isaiah said, there will be darkness, darkness, darkness. But the Bible says, arise and shine. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The darker the world gets, the brighter it's going to get for the people of God. God said, I've called my church to go from brightness to brightness, from glory to glory. Are you ready? And from faith to faith. Yes, are you, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid about the Antichrist? Why am I afraid? Bring on the Antichrist. We win. 
Bring on the last days, we win. Bring on hell, we win. Because when it's all said and done, the trumpet is going to sound. And we're about to get up out of here. Are you listening to me? Death is not the end. It's a doorway to a new beginning. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout if you're going up in the clouds to be with him forever. Stand up and give your Savior the praise. I wish you'd calm down. I wish you'd get fired up. Years ago, I was going to preach in the West Indies. And as I went to the West Indies to preach, the preacher came to me after the service. He said, I used to preach that way. I used to preach with that fire like you. He says, but... I mean, I got educated, and I, and I, and I, I calmed down. He says, he said, I settled down. I said, you didn't settle down. You dried up. When you got the Holy Ghost, you stay on fire. And when you say, my God, when you get older, you don't retire, you refire. Are you listening to me? This is the hour to refire. This is the hour to get supercharged in the Holy Ghost. Is anybody excited about the greatest revival in all of human history? Shout if you believe God is still on the throne and hell is still defeated. church in Long Island, not another church. We need a church that's hearing a sound from heaven right in the middle of hell. A church that has its hand on the pulse of God. A church that's got its ear to the ground in prayer. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love what Jesus said. I'm, I'm done here. And the 70 returned, Luke 10. The 70 returned with joy. Everybody shout with joy. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto your name. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall from heaven as lightning. I love that. I love it. Satan is a fallen foe. He's a defeated foe. I got Tom Hollihan coming for the tent. I got Donna Shambach coming for the tent. We're going to gang up on the devil, and we're going to see a revival break out in this area. We're going to see souls saved. Amen. I'm about to turn many people in this church loose under that tent, the way I was turned loose under a tent as a young man. Still young, thank God. We don't need a dead church. That'd be such a very well-educated speaker. Could I ask you a question? How many people get healed when he's preaching? How many strongholds are broken? How many curses are broken? We don't need another motivational speaker behind the pulpit. I won't have motivational speakers anymore come to this church. I used to have them. They're very good at speaking. But there's no power. There's no evidence. God said, I'll confirm my word with supernatural signs that will follow. Raise your hands and shout, supernatural signs. I beheld, Jesus said, Satan fall from heaven as lightning. He was cast down, a fallen foe, defeated, thrown out of heaven. Now he's walking around one of those little beeper alarms. Beep, beep, I've fallen. I can't get up. He was thrown down. Cast down. Are you listening to me? He's a, he's a loser. He's an ex-employee from heaven that was kicked out and replaced. And now you and I are the worship leaders that will be in heaven that will take that place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doesn't want, Jesus doesn't want you to come to church and go home and live a defeated, discouraged, depressed life. 
He said, I've come that you might have shall life. Come on, say it like you're excited. A triumphant church is a church that can even look seemingly temporarily defeated, but still has enough faith to raise its hands in the same arena and say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is Lord. He is still a deliverer. He is still a healer. He is still a miracle worker. He is still a God that makes a way for me when there seems to be no way. How many of you still believe that faith overcomes the world? That faith overcomes the storms? That faith overcomes sin? I'm not through preaching yet. Are you ready? A little bit more. Then Jesus went on to say in Luke 10, Behold, I give unto you power. Everybody shout power. My God, the way you even said it, you don't have enough power to blow out a candle. Behold, I give unto you Shall I got power. Shall I got power. I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. He says you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, 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 nothing. I like the I like that word nothing. And nothing, nothing shall by any means be able to hurt you. Oh pastor, I, I got a bad headache. Speak to it. Say to the mount, be thou removed. Say this with me, faith speaks. I told you the most important thing we do at this church is the word. The move of God. The moving of the Holy Spirit. I've given you power. How many of you have power? When, I, when you lay hands on me, I should feel something. When you lay hands on me, I should be healed. See, we have relegated the power of God to the pulpit. We have relegated the power of God and designated the power of God to the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, and the evangelists. But Jesus didn't say this. He said to the church, Behold, I give unto you power. Everybody shout, I got power. I got power to cast out cancer. I got power to heal disease. I got power to deal with depression. I got power. Somebody shout, power, power, power. Oh, I got power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If you don't feel this, you need to be resurrected because you're dead. I said I've given you power. Whatever you bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it is loosed in heaven. I've given you power and authority over hell. Lay your hands on your body and say, sickness, I command you by the power of Almighty God. Go, stand on your feet, you lazy thing. Lay your hand on your body and say, I command you to go in Jesus' name. There goes tumors. There goes cancer. There goes arthritis. There goes vision issues. My great headache. I got the power. I got the power. I got the power. God gave me the power. You ain't got nothing. No unction. No passion. The fire you had went out 20 years ago. But there are some of us now not going to settle for the ashes of yesterday. We are going to stir up the gift again. We're going to launch out into the deep again. And we're going to see this island shaken. 
throw your hands up and scream to the top of your lungs, I got the power. I got the power. I got the power. What do you hear? I hear a sound. Shout, I got it. Shout, I got it. Shout, I got it. Sit down. Get up. Simon says, shout. Sit down. Behold, I give under you power. I got preachers talking about revival. They never even seen a revival. They never were used in a revival. You don't even know what revival is. I've seen ambulances show up at 10 meetings, leave empty. I've been with men like T.L. Osborne and R.W. Schambach and Jack West in the biggest stadiums in Mexico City with 65,000 people, thousands instantaneously healed. You're going to tell me about revival. You can't impart what you don't have. You can't give what you've never received. Notice, he said, I've given you power over what? Over what? Serpents, scorpions, and over all the power. Somebody shout, over all the power. I want you to remember this tomorrow. Shout, over all the power of the enemy. Now, notice, serpents and scorpions. Serpents strike you with your head. But scorpions strike you with their tail. But what Jesus is saying doesn't matter. Whether it's heads, whether it's tails, you win. I wish somebody would shout. It doesn't matter what you're going through, you win. It doesn't matter what, what oh my God, if the coin lands on the head or the coin lands on the tail, God said you win. I've given you power to tread upon serpents. That... About time. Somebody shout, I got power. Shout, I got power. Everybody shout, heads or tails, I win. I read the book from Genesis to Revelation. And those that overcome, I will grant them eternal life. Whatever. Whatever life throws at you, you win. disease. I got a bad report. What in hell are you afraid of? Because whether you live or you die, you win. I said whether I live or die, I win. No matter what the weapon is, I want everybody to know that I win. I said I win. I said, I win. Is anybody on the winning side? I said, is anybody on the winning side? For whatsoever is born of God overcometh this world. And this is our victory, even our faith. I serve a God who took the sting out of death. I serve a God who crushed the head of the serpent and said, I've given my people the victory. If you got a sound of victory, release it from your mouth. Let it flow into your spirit. Praise him now. I rebuke fear. I rebuke disease. You will not live in self-pity another day. You're living in victory. Scream yes. Wake up your faith. You will not go home like you came. Don't give up hope. 
God said to Isaiah, I've carried you. For since you were born, I carried you. I'll be your God throughout your entire lifetime until your hair is white with age. Isaiah 46 verse 3 and 4. I made you. I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. The psalmist said the Lord will work out the plan. Psalm 138, 8. For my life, for your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God, everybody shout, he is God. Shout, he is my God. He is the most high. He's the almighty. He is my God. He said with long life, will he satisfy me and show me his salvation? Psalm 46, 1. God is my refuge. He is my strength a very present help in a time of trouble. I'm stirred up. I said, I'm stirred up. While some of you are dried up, I'm stirred up. Now, therefore, therefore, the Lord your God is God. Shout the faithful God. Shout if he's been good to you when you weren't good to him. Shout if he's been good to you even when you were not faithful to him. When you were faithless, he remained faithful. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to tell every one of you here and those watching online, sickness is not going to follow you this year. Defeat is not going to follow you this year. Poverty is not going to follow you this year. Goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. Shout if you got victory in your spirit. I feel a Holy Ghost shout coming on. Oh, why not? No. Therefore, the Lord your God is God. Somebody's getting up out of the bed tonight. Somebody's coming out of the tomb tonight. You've been living in the cave a long time. You're coming out. Matter of fact, I heard the Holy Ghost just say, tell them tonight is their night to announce their coming out party. The church is coming out. I said the church is coming out. The queers have come out of the closet and the church has gone in the closet. But tonight I got an announcement to make. We're on our way back and we're coming back powerful and we're coming back blessed. Shout, I can tell us how you feel. Raise your hand. I can't wait for this tent revival. I can't wait. I feel it in my bones. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. It's like fire. My God, you lost your joy. But this world can't steal my joy. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I feel a preaching spirit. You get this in your bones, your bones will be healed of cancer. You get this in your bones, you'll have no more arthritis. You get this in your spirit, every dead dream will be resurrected. Oh. Therefore, I command every one of you that are watching Be thou made whole Say it, be Scream thou made whole Shout Pastor Anthony, be made whole 
my Uncle Vinny be made whole. My Aunt Mary Ann be made whole. Everyone watching me be made whole. Nilly be made whole. Those that are laying in bed, you're coming out of this thing. You're about to make a supernatural comeback. Feel the Holy Spirit. Get out of your seat, that's why you're still sick. You've been down long enough, you've been discouraged long enough, you've had pain in your legs long enough. It's time to jump, it's time to dance, it's time to run, it's time to spin. I got a few something happening. Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. Somebody leap, somebody dance, somebody jump, somebody run, somebody spin. Know this. Know this. Therefore, that the Lord your God, he is God. If I got to beg you to come out for a night of revival, you're dead. We may go every single night of the whole summer. Well, I got to work, Pastor. You get the Holy Ghost, you'll have more strength than you've ever had in your life. Are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to inconvenience ourselves to see a move of God in Long Island? It ain't gonna happen on your terms. It ain't gonna happen the way you think it is. Mario Marillo texted me last night. He says, there's gonna be a great success in your 10 revival. And I believe it and I agree it. So I'm gonna shout about it right now. Oh, I can't wait for Sunday. I may drown some I may drown some demons in some oil. Now, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He's the faithful God. Shout, he is the faithful God. Muhammad is dead. Buddha is dead. There's only one that arose over the power of death, hell, and the grave. There's only one that's coming back again who's going to call my name. Somebody shout hallelujah. No, therefore, that the Lord, your God, he is a faithful God, keeping his covenant. Everybody shout a covenant keeper. Not like most people that I've met. He's a covenant keeper. Keeping his covenant of love to a thousand, a thousand generations. That's a long time. That's a long time. People say, I, I do until they don't in marriage. But he says, I'll keep covenant to a thousand generations. There's a pastor watching me right now from Florida. Revival's about to hit your church. Another pastor that's watching me in Georgia. Revival's about to hit your church. There's a preacher that's going to hear this. They may be hearing now or watching it later. The city's about to give you your own building. Shout if you believe in the power of God. The power of God will burn a tumor out of your brain. Raise your hands and say, a thousand generations. But Kim, I want you to hear this. Listen to this, Keith. A thousand generations. He didn't say to everyone. 
He didn't say to everyone, but this is what he said. Deuteronomy 7, 9. There it is. To who? Of those who? Of everybody? Did he say he's going to do it for everybody? Who did he say it for? How many of you love him? Raise your hands. I declare unprecedented, unstoppable, insurmount God miracles more than you can count this year. Every good, perfect gift comes down from above the Father of lights. In him there is no variableness. Shade, shadow of changing, changing like shifting shadows. God promised that he would not abandon you. You're not going to have to be concerned about food for your children, your babies. God says even when the shelves are bare, my people shall have more than enough. Psalm 37 says even in a famine, my people shall be satisfied. You're not going to lack for anything. How many of you have that kind of faith? Now I know why the Lord told me to preach it, because some of you still don't get it. How many of you have that kind of faith? The economy is going to crash. The economy is going down, but the church is about to rise up like in the day of Noah. Whoever's in the ark shall be saved. Remain standing. If you're not, stand. If you can. If not, that's okay. You have nothing to be afraid of. Why are you worrying? The greatest miracle of all, Mike, is he saved your soul. If he can save your soul and forgive every sin, don't you have the faith he can heal your body? He can restore your family. He can bless you immensely financially. He's a faithful God. He's a good God. He rewards those that diligently. I can't wait for Sunday. I'm preaching one of the final parts of vision entitled Turn It. How many of you ready for God to turn it? These are all steps to your vision and dream becoming a reality. He's going to turn it. How many of you ready for God to turn it? <laughs> My God, he's alive tonight. He's a miracle worker. He is the only true living God. He said, I'm a jealous God. Serve me with your whole heart. Beside me, there is no other. Come here, Mary Jane. Quickly. There is another promotion coming to you. My God, you're so blessed. I can't stand you. You're so blessed. Lift your hands. Receive it by the Holy Ghost. Yes, Shabako Oh, Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands and thank Him. Oh, hallelujah. Let God arise. And His enemies shall be scattered. Glory to God. Lift your hands. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Lord, I thank you that this glory is spreading. As the waters cover the sea, Lord, let your glory cover the earth. Let your glory cover the earth. Grab somebody by the hand and lift their hand and just say glory. Grab somebody by the hand. Hold their hand up. If they're not standing, pull them out of their chair and just say glory, glory, glory. Just keep saying glory. Just keep saying glory. Oh, the Lord is good and his mercy, his love and his mercy endure forever. And the glory filled the temple that the priest could not even stand to minister. For the glory of the Lord had fallen among the people. Glory. I said, say glory. Close your eyes. Let the glory come on you. 
Let the power of God saturate you. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Come and worship at this altar. You need healing? Come and worship at this altar. I'm not laying hands on you. God is. Glory, glory, glory. You need healing? Worship at the altar. Well, I want the man to touch me. No, let God touch you. God can do a much greater job than I ever could. Glory, 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 glory. I need a few people that afford the Holy Ghost to pray. Oh, there's a mighty revival getting ready to break out in the West Indies. I feel it in my bones. Lord, I pray for a mighty revival in the midst of war would break out in Russia and in the Ukraine among the churches that will cry out in your name. Oh, Oh, sir, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right here. I want to pray for you. Everybody keep praying. Come. Come. Somebody grab that man right there with the gray jacket. Come. Shande de boko rababa sandari atai. Ida bo shamma mandele le bo hosa kalabandia. Inde le bo shande le le bo kurababa siya. Urababa bandele be shikalabahaya. Lift your hands right now, both of you. The power of God is coming on you. The devil is trying to take you out, but God is about to restore your life. God is touching you right now. I break every demonic attack against your life and family and against your mind in the name of Jesus. Health and healing spring forth speedily. Kanda bo shama mandele bo ko salabaya, kandele bo shandele be kindele bo ko rama mandia, shandele bo ko raba baba sandele ya taya, ye shalabo ko raba baba siya. You want to recharge? Pray in the Holy Ghost. You want to leave strong in the Lord and the power of His might tonight? Pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm so tired coming to church. You're in the flesh. You're not in the Holy Ghost. Glory, glory, glory. For my God is great and he is greatly to be praised. I said he is greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of our God shall be praised. You wake up in the morning, declare the word of God. You wake up in the morning, you cry out in prayer. You wake up in the morning, you start with praise and worship. The enemy can't stay in an atmosphere where there's faith. People begin to pray and worship God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mom, turn around, lay hands on James. I'm believing for the completion of a healing in his body tonight. Pastor Olga, lay hands on his other shoulder. 
Speak life and healing. Blood pressure. All organ function perfect in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name, I rebuke, renounce, and reject all infirmity for the people of God. I declare healing. Now lift your hands and shout, I am healed in Jesus' name. Now shout like you believe that. Online, say this with me. Only of those online, say this with me. I receive only those online. Listen to what I'm saying. Say this online. Everybody watching on social media, say this with me. I receive my miracle by faith tonight, right now. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Receive it now in the name of the Lord. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you Sunday. I pray you were blessed by today's message. If you're ever in the Long Island area, Olga and I would love to connect with you. You could join us every Thursday night at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Go and check out our brand new website at JILC. Dot org, and you can also send us your prayer request to prayer at JILC.org. If you're ever in the Long Island area, come on out and be a part of what God is doing at the place where miracles happen. We'll see you next time.